In this video, we're going to take a look at the distance and edge detect nodes. Now, the distance node can be found as part of the operational nodes. So here I'm going to tap the spacebar. It's going to open up the operational nodes. And then here towards the top, you can see that we have distance. So here in this example, I already have a distance node in place. And you can see that I'm viewing the result of a distance node here in the 2D view. Now, the distance node is particularly good at making a Voronoi diagram as you can see here and in this example here. Now this pattern turns up frequently in the natural world so it can be really good for texturing. Now the distance node itself, if we just kind of zoom in and focus on this node, we have two inputs for this node, a mask input and a source input. And I have two examples showing how these inputs are used. So let's take a look at this first input that's only utilizing the mask input and that's what we're viewing here in the 2D view. So to start, I need to feed the distance node a mask. So let's start by taking a look at what I have here in this example. So here's the tile generator. Now this is just the tile generator that can be found here in the library. And it's just gone through a couple settings to get this kind of pattern that you have here. So we have these tiny little squares uh, that have some luminance variation. And they've been scattered around to create uh, this mask. So then this is piped through a levels and all this levels is doing is just clamping the varying luminance values so that all the squares are white for this first example. So then we just pipe this mask. So this is the mask that we have. We just pipe this into the mask input. Now this is the pattern that we get on the node itself. If we take a look at the parameters, you can see that we have a color mode. So we have color and grayscale here. You can see that we are just looking at this grayscale value. And to actually get this pattern, we're going to change the value for the maximum distance. So as I start to change this value, you can see how it's affecting the pattern itself. So if we take a look at this at a value of zero, you can see that this is the result of the mass that we input. So if we start to just slowly increase here this maximum distance, you can see that this is the pattern that we get. So now let's look at another example. So we're going to take a look at this second distance node. Now this node is actually, or this distance node is actually using the mask input. So it's using this exact same mask input, but it's also utilizing a source input as well. And this is the pattern that it generates. So let's go back to that tile generator and let's look at the difference between the mask and the source. So this is going to be the source. Remember, it's that same kind of scattered little square shapes with varying luminance values. And then we have this levels, which is just, again, just clamping this so that we get more of a binary mask. So we feed this mask here into the mask input and the source here of the tile generator into the source input. And this is the new pattern that we get. Now, again, if we go ahead and check out the maximum distance, let's go ahead and just move this all the way down here to basically zero. You can see that we are looking directly at the source, which brings me to the combined source and distance options. So notice here that I'm looking at only the source input, which is here on the distance node itself is the second input. Now, as I start to increase my maximum distance, just as before, you can see that what we're doing here is we're increasing this distance and here we get uh, the pattern. Now, we also have the option to utilize this combine. So if we come in here and we click this combine option, the distance node will combine the distance computation with the source itself. So in this case, you can see now the pattern that we get is just a little bit different. You can see some of the source pattern as well as a combination of the distance computation. In our case, for the particular pattern that we want to work with, we're going to switch this only to source. So let's just step away from the distance node for a moment and let's focus on the edge detect node. So here in this section, you can see that I'm viewing the output of the edge detect node. Now to find this node, it's going to be located in the library and you can find it by searching edge and here you'll see the edge detect node. Now the edge detect node itself only has just a few parameters. Here I have a tile random and this is being fed into the edge detect. And you can see that if I just adjust the width, uh, you can see how that's updating and changing the pattern. And then we also have an edge roundness. So let me just kind of zoom in on this area here. And uh, let's just decrease here our edge width. Now, if we take a look at the edge roundness, if we lower this value, you can see that we can get very sharp corners. And if we increase the roundness, obviously we're going to be rounding out the corners. Now I mentioned in the bevel node tutorial that the bevel utilizes a combination of the distance node and the edge detect node to create the bevel effect. So now let's take a look at how these two nodes can be used together. 
For example, Edge Detect uses the distance to make edges more or less thick. So here's an example. If we go ahead and just double click the bevel node, in this case here, I'm feeding this edge detect into the bevel to create this shape. And so just as we covered in the bevel node tutorial, uh, we can now start to utilize distance as it's part of the bevel node itself. So here you can see where I'm starting to get you know, some different values here on the bevel of these edges. Here's another example that was also covered in the bevel node tutorial in that a gradient is used. So we have this gradient here. This gradient is used to drive the bevel profile. Again, we're using edge detect to get this shape that we want to work with. And then we're going through here and we're using bevel to create some customized profiles for that bevel operation. So if we take a look at the entire workflow to this, we start with just some random pattern that we either create through procedural means or it could be a bitmap that we import into Substance Designer. We can find edges on that to create a version of that pattern. And then we can utilize the bevel node to bevel different patterns. So let's look at another way that distance and edge detect can be used to generate patterns. So going back to this pattern that we had generated, let's now add an edge detect to this to create some different types of patterns. So I'm taking this pattern and I'm feeding this here into the edge detect. And you can see that we get more of this kind of organic shape. Or we could use the same pattern with an edge detect to create cracks or we can use bevel to create some kind of rock shapes. So as you can see, the distance node in combination with edge detect and bevel can be used in various ways to create very interesting and organic patterns that you can use in the texturing process. So now let's take a look at a practical example on how these techniques can be used. So what we're taking a look at here is a completely procedurally authored texture here in Substance Designer. It was created by Nicholas Weirman, who is a tech artist and developer for Algorithmic. And Nicholas is a true substance master. So here, we're just going to focus in on just this area to demonstrate how these cracks were made. So let's just look at this portion of the graph. And as you'll see, it covers a lot of the techniques that we had just talked about previously. So let's start here with uh, this pattern. So it begins with this uh, tile random node. And so we start to get uh, this pattern. And you can see that we have some varying luminance. Uh, then here we have a mask that's created. So just using the levels node to create a mask. And these two nodes are then piped into our distance node to create this pattern. Again, just as we talked about previously. So now we want to take this pattern and we want to create uh, some cracks. So this distance node is then piped into the edge detect. And so this is what we get. Here you can see the edge width setting is set to 1. Now we just want to thicken this line up a little bit. So we'll just kind of modulate uh, this pattern. So here we have uh, a blur. So we have two blur nodes here. And uh, we got just a little bit of a change on the intensity to this. And what we're going to do, take this first blur node, and we're just going to warp it. And it's going to be blended with this second blur node. And so this is what we get. So the lines are just a little bit thicker through going through this modulation. Now we have another warp node. Let's take a look at this. This warp node starts to just warp or distort these cracks a bit. And so this warp is simply driven by this purlin noise. And this is the effect that we get. So then this pattern is then piped into the slope blur. As you can see here. And it's just simply modulated with a slope input of this noise. And so this is what we get to create these cracks. Now again, if I just kind of move back here to my pattern. So let's come back over to uh, probably our edge detect. And if I wanted to increase this, let's say that we take the edge width and maybe go from 1 to 2. Here in the 3D view, you can see where that has just increased that width of that crack. Now, this isn't what we'd want to do. But as you can see, this combination of utilizing the distance node and edge detect allows us to create specific patterns that we can then further modulate to create crack effects like you see here. 